of last today we have the world known scholar <coughs> Sheikh Qadi Fadullah among us. Inshallah we will be listen to his speech. His speech now is simply a speech. It's called enemy speech. You will be Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nukminu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'uzu billahi min shurure anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعض فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان على النبي من حرج فيما فرض الله له سنة الله في الذين خلوا من قبل وكان أمر الله قدرا مقبورا الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخشونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما تحيتهم يوم يلقونه بصلاة 
وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَضْلًا كَبِيرًا صَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَصَدَقَ رَسُولُهُ النَّبِيُّ الْكَرِيمُ دِسْتِنْوِي شُعَلَمَا محترم مولانا عبدالرزا قزیز صاحب دامد برکاتو ہوں و دامد برکاتو ہوں My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam First of all I would like to make a dua O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except our sitting here O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me tawfiq to speak in accordance with Quran and Sunnah and give all of us to listen to it very carefully. My dear respected brothers and sisters, as you know we are in the month of Rabiul Awwal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was born in this month. I want to establish a base for my talk and my words because you know that for non-issues we the Muslims are fighting with one another. We are not going to the issue concerned in depth. That what it means and what somebody said. He means it literally and really or metaphorically. And thus, we started, we started giving fatwa against one another. My dear respected brothers and sisters, that is a dispute between ulama and that is only an academic issue. That whether human beings have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ibadah or they have been created for khalafa. My dear respected brothers, both of them, they have based their idea or their point of view on the wording of Holy Quran. So we call it the issue of semantics. Our Mirza al If both the group will understand what he means and what I mean, the dispute is gone. And both are right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَمَا خَلَفَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created jinn and ins, but only to worship me for my ibadah. And as you know, when you are showing obedience to someone, so it means that you know him to some extent. Not totally. Know him to some extent. And knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally that is impossible. If somebody claims that I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally, so he is going to limitize the entity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to make him mahdud. Sometime back, not now. 
not in the time of Mutisa. But in my time and in the time of Allah Durga Gazisa, in logic, we had a famous book. So many books, but what are the one of the famous books? They just call Sunnah Bulurum, the Sheikh Muhammad Bihari. So in the Muqaddimah, or in the preface, or in the introduction, is Muramat al Istihlal. He says, Subhanah Ma'awarasha. Subhanah. Look at me. Allah. Look at my baby like body language. Subhanah. Subhanah. When we say the word Subhanah, number one, that is glory to Allah, glorification of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say it. But Arab in normal talk, they say this words that Tahajjud amazing. Like it is, we say, Subhanallah. So Shaykh Muhammad Bihari, he says, Subhanallah. What a great entity he is. And then after that, he talked about Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala a little bit. One sentence in that talk is, La Little me, little meaning is that you cannot put limits to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah, Allah. to the entity of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but technical meaning or terminological meaning. La yuhaddu means you cannot define Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The God definition that must be inclusive, exclusive. Comprehensive. Exclusive, inclusive, or comprehensive. And it means that you saw the you know the thing concerned from A to Z, from all around for all from all dimensions. While we cannot know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah does not have dimension, he is beyond dimensions. You have studied physics. I studied long, long ago. Then he forgot. Sometime, my old memory come back. Then he speak about that. So my dear respected brother and sister in Islam, when Abdul Aqsaq says that Salat and Shah will be 8.15. But in Hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَوْ لَا نَشُقَ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي لَأَمَرَتُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ لِكُلِّ صَلَاقٍ وَلَا أَمَرَتُمْ بِالتَّخِيرِ وَشَاعِ الْعَنِسْبِ الْلَيْلِ that if it, were, if it would not have been difficult for my ummah, so I would have ordered them to do miswak for every prayer as a wajib. And I would have ordered and commanded them to delay Isha up to midnight or until midnight. And so, according to Hanifa, Rahmatullahi Ali. The mustahab time of Isha is midnight. But as we are working at that time, but tomorrow is Monday. And Monday is Columbus Day. Yeah. What? I, yeah. So Columbus Day. Yes, yeah. yeah, Father of America. Yeah. Our founder of America. Even though Arab, they discovered America before Columbus. <laughs> but people do not mention that. Otherwise, if you will walk, huh, Throughout America, you will find lot, you will find lot of Arabic words there for states and streets and so, uh, not for states, for cities and for streets. There in California, we have one word or one name that is called Marsad, M E R C E D, a city name, Marsad. So I said that they write it with the C. But in Arabic, that is Marsad with the Saad. And Marsad is actually the checking point mm -hmm. in Arabic. Or the radar station. Got it? So that was the checking point somewhere for something. That's why it's called Marsad. There is another street that is called Sepulveda. 
S E P U L V E D A. So I was telling the brother that actually that word is Vipul Vida. When you were saying bye bye to your guest, that was a point where the people used to give a company to the guest there and say there, okay, bye bye. You know what I'm saying? I'm making it such a day. And then you will give me a degree of <laughs> so anyhow, my dear respected brother, I'm making jokes. Anyhow, so tomorrow is day off. So what do you think if we will prolong your speech and it's all hard? Are you okay? We're okay. Gentlemen, <laughs> what So anyhow, yes. no, I'm not giving you a top line. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Now the point is, that I have not created jinn and ins, but only to worship me. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalal, he has translated this word, because Sufiya and Salikin, they are going for Marifa before Ibadah. That if you don't don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you worship him? And ulamai al kalam they say, wa marifatu al-haqqi wa wajibun. Aqlam anda al-mu'tazila wa naqlam anda ahli sunnah. This is a, I'm giving you free tickets. Wa marifatu al-haqqi wa wajibun. Aqlam anda al-mu'tazila and not in the Ahl Sunnah. To know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is first. Because this word wajib according to Mutakallimeen is the synonym to first. And not only to them only, to Jumhur. This only the case of all Imam Abu Khalifa Ramadullahi Ali differentiate between Fadr and Wajib. Imam Ali, Imam Shafi and Imam Muhammad, they don't differentiate between Fadr and Wajib. They use the word wajib for Fadr and Fadr for Wajib. But very rarely they are using the word farz. For farz they are using what? What are they doing? What are they doing? And this is why, for example, now we prayed our salat the maghrib. Three rakat we say farz. We call it wajib. But we, to them, wajib. Send it to farz. Got it? And what we are using wajib for, they don't call it wajib. Because wajib according to Harfiya, it is one level double game for us. As the Fuqaha of Ahnaf, they have defined for us Masalata, Bidalilin Qatriyin La Shubhata Fiyah. That any practice or any deal which is proven there in the text of Quran and Sunnah, which is Qatriyin Subhud, especially the Quran, or the Mutawatir Hadith, and Bidun Shubha. The ayah of the hadith concern has only one interpretation. There is no difference of this imam with this imam as far as the explanation of the ayah of hadith is concerned. So if a case is there in such a way, so it means that the action concerned is first. But Imam Hanifa is calling it first and the who is calling it? Wajib. Got it? Love. Yes. My dear respected brothers and sisters, now what is wajib according to Hanafiya? So they say, Masabat bin Dalilin, Fihi Shubhara. That the issue concerned or the deep concern is mentioned there either in Quran or in Hadith of Rasulullah. Shubha means not a doubt. <coughs> hadith is proven. But that is not to the level of Mutawatir. That is never in category there Mutawatir. I have written a book for <coughs> I named it as the right of in Usul al Hadith. Another one in Urdu, I named it as Fajir al Hadith. And the third one in English, the authenticity of Hadith. So, dear, I have explained it that whether a Hadith, they are Mutawatir, Mashkur, and Ahad, these are three categories, or only two categories. So difference of opinions. Some ulama say there are three categories. 
متواتر مشکوک and a hard. Got it? But another point of view, and that is the preferred one, that hadith is of two categories only. Number one, that is mutawatir, and number two, that is ahad. Then ahad are categorized into other three categories. One is mashkur, one is aziz, and another one is barif. So if hadith is mutawatir, the explanation and interpretation does not have any difference of opinion between imams, the issue concerned will become farz according to Abu Hanifa, wajib according to Jumhur. But if the case is below that, in Mashura Ahad, so there will be a difference as well in interpretation. So, Imam Abu Hanifa regarding certain things, he said that is wajib. But Jumhur, they don't say that is wajib because if they say wajib, it means that is farz. And when Imam says wajib, so that is one level level then follow. So he used the word wajib. Jamur sometimes call it a sunnah of wakada, and sometimes they use another word, akadu sunnah. Which is yes, one step higher than sunnah of wakara. Like, what do you think? Salat al fitr and salat al usha. What is its status according to Hanafi? Wajib. But according to Jumhur, that is not wajib. According to them, that is Akad al Sunnah. Sadaqatul Fitr. You are giving. That's wajib according to Muhanifa. But Akad al Sunnah according to Jumhur. Urbani in Eid al Usha. That is wajib according to Hanafi. But that is Akad al Sunnah according to Jumhur. So, anyhow, my dear respected brothers and Sisters in Islam. Maripatul Haq, Wajibun Aqlan, and the Mu'tazila, Wan Aqlan, and the Ahl Sunnah, Wa Yu'ayyir Bil'Aq. Mu'tazila, they are rationalists. They are what? Rationalists. But most of them are saying that it does not have reason, but still they are called rationalists. Even though the reason doesn't work there. But they say, we are rationalists. We are going by the Aqlan. And that's why sometimes they ignore the ayah of Quran or hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam because the reason says something else. So then they are making a ta'weed in their ayah or in their hadith. Yes? What's that, is it? My dear respected brother, that's the same. And, yes, me. Then inshallah, it becomes easy. <laughs> so now, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can mask. Otherwise, how you can believe? But, not totally, in totality. Not totally, but in totality. Not bin jumla, but bin jumla. You have said it now, not bin jumla, but bin jumla. Baba Sadi says, oh. Baba Sadi, Oh Allah, the one who is too much higher than our khiyar, our zwan, our wah. Imagination. E bartaras kiyalo kiyaso gumano wah. Was Haji Muftaqim the Shuri there? Whatever the people have said, since the very beginning of human life, so you are beyond that. Imam Ali Kamutullahi Ali narrated a saying of Sayyid Ali Razi Allah Ta'ala regarding Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that kullu ma khatara bi balik aw jaa fi khayalik aw fi halim min ahwalik wallahu wa raqa zalik What a beautiful word of Sayyid Ali What's that? It's the right Ke kullu ma khatara bi balik Whatever is roaming around your heart or your mind and brain about Allah aw jaa fi khayalik or it came in your imagination. Or if you had him in a while, or in any condition and form of yours, Allah is too beyond that. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, who is the Allah of Allah, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, who is the Allah of Allah, who is the utmost, highest category of worshippers after Anbiya alayhi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why we call him Abdur al-Khalayat of al-Anbiya. What do we call him? Abdul Khalai, the best personality after Nabi and the creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Abu Bakr Siddiq. 
He had a dua. So he used to say, Yaman, Rayat al Ma'rifati, Al Qusuru al Ma'rifati. Or the one whose utmost knowing and marifa is that the person concerned has to admit that I couldn't mourn you, or I couldn't have known you as you are deserving. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, please if you can turn up these telephones. I was telling my brother in this. This brother in this. They was a harapil aswat of masajid. One of the simple signs of Qiyam. So I say you can explain the aswat plural of south. Different meanings. That the sounds are the voices that has overtaken the masjid that is one of the symbol of sign of Qiyamah. So what we mean by aswad? Number one, that's people carelessly. They are talking to one another inside the masjid in such a way which is not in accordance with the respect of masjid. Got it? Sayyidina Umar he was there in Masjid. So two people, they were talking to one another but very loud. So Sayyidina Umar, he was a mere umineen and khalifa. He came to them and he asked them, he asked them, where do you come from? Where do you come from? Adab and respect. Adab of whom? Adab of whom? Masjid. Adab of whom? Sheikh, Adab of whom? Half is a Quran. Adab of whom? Elders and white beard people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us a doubt. So now I'm going to name him the Toffler. The philosopher. Who? Toffler. A well known philosopher, Western philosopher. He said that the way technology is taking us in a direction, he said that is the utmost destruction for humanity. He said, this technology will destroy humanity. And I think already technology has done that. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. No, not going. Oh, look at me. This technology was or is for the benefit of human. But now, that is that much advanced that now that is out of the control of human. Yeah. Now technology is controlling human. Human is not controlling the technology. <coughs> Am I right or not? What do you mean? <laughs> so anyhow, my dear respected brothers, Adin al Nasiha. Deen is sincere advice. If I am flip flop, yeah, Mickey Mouse business, indeed it doesn't work. Because Deen is in black and white. See how so fair. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala said in one of his sermon, the Anasu is not. Imma khairu wa imma shah. The people are of two categories. Either they are good or they are bad. Now that is up to you where you want to stand. With this group or with that group. So it means black and white. Got it? But we are living in such an era that there are so many categories. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us and keep us with good say Amin. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us good Amin. But we as followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are bound to make a dua. Oh Allah, make the entire humanity a good one. Why? Because that is the muqtaza or the requirement of an ayah for the Quran, kum kum khaira ummah in okhliya til nas. You are the best ummah. Now the nas, moradullah sir, nufi sir, harjimin sir, maulu sir, other ulama who are sitting here, that they say that Mori sir, he is from, he is from Ravent and he is from Britain, and he's from Istanbul. <laughs> Am I right or not? Yes. And to say, because he is roaming around the whole world for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we can say that he is a Alamin Morisa, a global Morisa. So, anyhow, these ulama, they say that Linnas, that is Al Jahu al Majroof. And Jal al Majroof is in need of fail or shibi fail to be connected and related. You have to tie it to a fail. Are to share the fail. So now, here there are two words. Kuntum, 
خير أمة شو كنتوا مزباربة إن خير اللي شبه فعلي خير الله شبه فعلي ما جات الورد إسمه صح ليش إسمه تمزيل ده إسمه تمزيل so that is شبه فعلي so you can carry the slim nas either to kuntum or to khaira so if you will tie you to kuntum so it mean kuntum lim nas e khaira ummah you are for people the best ummah and if you will tie it to khair so then it mean you are the best ummah for people meaning why is both yes al marjoon ila shay in wahid return is the same meaning So why you are the best? Because you are thinking of the best of humanity. And best of humanity, is there anything much more better than Iman? No. no. Say, if somebody, I am too weak in Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen my Iman. If somebody will offer me the whole world for my Iman, they say bye bye to Iman. I will spit on this word and I will say Iman is the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So I am the weakest one, and you are much more strong, Muslim. You will do much more than that. I was waiting here. The Karim Malik, the Muslimah, Ali Al Jinnah, Wa Taala. When the Sulla Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you should come forward. Come here. When Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was going for the battle of Tabuk, and as you know that at that time Caesar it was the superpower. It was not only Caesar alone, but the superpower was not. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was proceeding. The Munafiqin they were making excuses to get rid of this trip or this expedition because to face the superpower who can do that? So there were Munafiqin who did it, but some Muslim. They were very nice Muslims. Amongst them, there were three: Murad ibn Rabi, Hilal ibn Umayyah, and Kaab ibn Malik. Rasi Allahu Taala anhu ibn Malik. Kaab ibn Malik, he missed only one battle, and that was Razwa Badr. Otherwise, he never missed any battle for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And Hilal and Murad, they have not missed any battle, including Badr. But when Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم came back. So the Murafiqin used to come. Yaad Azroon Ilayku. Is a rajat to Ilayku. Kul la ta'adzir wa kadam ba Allahu. La nuhmin alakum kadam ba an Allahu min akhbarikum. Wa sayyid Allahu amalakum wa rasul. Rasul Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was coming back to Medina. Now Murafiqin was talking to one another. What do we do here? We were thinking that he is going there and Allah, everything is gone. We will get rid of him because who can find Caesar? Who can find the Caesar room? So they will get crushed there, and we will get rid of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But then, when he was coming back as a winner, because of fear, Caesar allowed with two hundred thousand army into the show. Otherwise, Sahaba al Barulay Ali Malhain they were only thirty thousand. But Caesar had a bitter experience before they in was by Muta. That the Muslims in that battle were only three thousand, and my army was one hundred thousand. And the way they fought with this one hundred thousand, we couldn't face three thousand. How we will face these thirty thousand? Because we are fighting for life, they are fighting for death. Oh, Allah. We are fighting for what? For life. And the Sahaba are fighting for what? They are fighting for death. So how we can face? Sayyidina Ali Azza wa Jalla. Somebody ask him. There are people who need. What has made you that much brave? That in front of you, hundreds of people are standing. You are all alone. You don't turn around. What has made you that much brave? Say the Ali of the Allah Taala Am said, "Shajjani maut." My death has given me that brave. So that was such a word. People were unable to conceive it. Are to digest it. I to absorb it. I to understand it. So they say, "Amirumani, we couldn't understand what you mean. Death has made you brave." He said, "Of course." He said, "Can you explain me?" He said, "Yes." Number one, my strong belief is, my strong belief is 
the, the death of everyone there at the Muslim point in time. You cannot delay for one second. When the time will come, that's the number one. And number two, I strongly believe that nothing else can deprive me of my life but only my life. So when the time is appointed and nothing else can deprive me of my life, so what the need of fear then? Why should I have I fear? So that was the case of Sahaba that they were fighting for death. And they used to say, Kustu, Rabbi Kaaba. Kustu, Rabbi Kaaba. So my dear respect brothers, anyhow, going back. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was coming back. So Munafiqin, they were thinking of lame excuses, not lame excuses. Yes, lame is for Yes, they were thinking of lame excuses. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told his prophet, Ya Tadiru they are planning for excuses. But the moment you will arrive there, they will come. Pull, make it clear. Because pull, we say in Usul Tafsir that we are in Ayah Surah is Musabbar bi Kalibati Qul. So we call it Al Amr al Alani del Quran. Yes, declare it. Declare, make it, make it public. Make it public. So Allah said, Pull, make it public. Yes, sir. Prophet said, no excuse. But not by Allah has told us all about it. Allah has told us all about it. All about it. You will be making excuses in the youth and the aura. Wa ma hiya bi aura. In your inguna. Illa firara. And now you will say, oh no, nobody was there in my house and my house was empty and I had to take care of my house and take care. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, lame excuse. Wa ma hiya bi aura. In your inguna illa firara. Their houses were not empty. Why? Because if somebody is there in the cause of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. But they are running away from the battle and from expedition. They are Buzdil, they are Juban, they are covered. So my dear respected brothers, that was the case of Munafiqi. But some good Muslims also, they stayed behind for reasons. Some are known and some are not known. Yes, and they came to the product of the life. Thank you. Yes. But you didn't get to the wedding singers. Yes, because the moment you will say Corona, sometimes they another thing was. One of the last says, he is heading from my province. We are from the same province. But they are from Hazar. We are beyond Hazar. Or across it. So when we are coming from the shower side and we cross over at a bridge, the Punjab province is stopped. So there, the custom check post, the excise check post, the forest check post, the police check post, <coughs> almost five check posts are here. And all of them, they will be shooting, checking the holders and the car and whatever transport is coming there from because you are coming from Pashtun Pah maybe you have a jacket maybe you have what? I'm not talking about this jacket there are different type of jackets to tell you one joke look at me one of the last of he knows my mother and my mother said you know the name everybody knows that <laughs> yes. Why? Because Western world propagated against that Darulun that much because they used to call it Kent of Jihad. So anyhow, Darulun Haqqani, for 13 years after 9-11, whenever I was coming back either from Saudi Arabia, from Umrah or Hajj, or coming back from Pakistan, especially from Pakistan, they were giving me a tough time here in the airport. 13 years. And not only that, domestic flight, for example, I was coming to New York, me, where is Benja? We used to go for domestic life three, four hours before, making a sitting here, calling here and here, and then in the end, five, ten minutes before, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, hurry, yeah, you got your, I say, Alhamdulillah, we got released. We got released. So, anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, 
when I was coming back. So they used to wait for me right in the exit of the airplane. And they are from right away the briefcase. And then the luggage. Yes. And sometimes they used to make jokes. They we are not giving this type of protocol at that time to charge the bush. <laughs> the way we are treating you. I say I'm looking and waiting for some type of protocol. I was looking for you, they pay you people up. <laughs> then I saw you and I said, I'm there. <coughs> so anyhow, my dear respected brother, that don't worry. Yes, two, three months before. We went to Chicago in connection to Hatha Bukhari and some other gurus you know yes. So we went there without the door. Huh? Elgin. Yes. Not Ulgin. <laughs> That's Elgin. Yes. So there, our friends, Rawadama, they were telling my friend Tarjan that when we announced on Friday, two, three weeks before. Their cousins are will be coming here for Khatmi Bukhari. He said, a few people, they came one after the other. You will be one of their cousins. <laughs> we said, yes. He said, why? So we said, what's wrong with that? <laughs> wrong with that. So they say that he is under surveillance by the FBI and CIA. It will cause us trouble. So when he told me later on when the job was done. So I told him that this Friday, because already I have done Hatim Bukhari, I have given my gurus and different brothers are different passages. So now next Friday you should make an announcement. Then get in touch with Padi saying he was under surveillance, now he has done payroll. <laughs> <laughs> so to be on the same side, just be in touch with him. I don't know why the people are propagating such like, why are you propagating us? So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters of Islam, Kavid Malik when he came, people jumped with him. That made me see he said, no, I will not. He said, for a while it came into my mind. But then, I said, no. If I will say and tell a lie, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him that he is telling lies. So then what? I cannot deceive the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so he said, I came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at me. He gave me a little bit smile. And he asked me a very simple question. What was wrong with you? <laughs> because there are sincere people. Yes, a common layman, you will ask him in a different way. <laughs> but someone whom you trust, if he has done something wrong, so you are told him totally different. And you do notice? You know who? You are the one cousin. <laughs> who was Bruce? Caesar. Say, the man who cheated Caesar. He was a close associate of Caesar. Yes? But when an inqilab and coup, it happened against the Caesar. So his enemies, they were hitting him from here and there. And Caesar, he was taken into confidence by the traitors. Because he was a close associate, so he was covering his face, and he came from the back and stayed in front of the back. Caesar. And they it gave him a cross of pain. And what is wrong with this head? Only he they pain for him. So he looked around. So he saw Caesar. He says that you think Caesar. Uh, no, 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 no. And you too, Brutus. And it is in history. That actually, that was the hit of a friend which caused death to Because someone whom you trust and he will cheat you. Here, Kavid Malik has not cheated the Prophet, but he was too close to the Prophet, sacrificing his life. So, Prophet asked him, What was wrong with you? So he said, Ya Rasulullah, la ayyum shayh, say one of us. Nothing but only laziness. I don't have any excuse why I did not join you. Only kasal was there, laziness was there. I said, what caused you that kasal and laziness? He said, I was thinking that that is a long travel to 1100 miles from Medina to Tabuk. 
1100 miles. So I was thinking that you will be traveling for so many days. You will be riding the camels. I have my swift horse, Berzon. Yes, he jumps like Mercedes. That's now what I do can to make it understand. Like Mercedes, it runs. Yeah, so I was thinking that I will take my daughter. Yes. Yes. So my dear respected brothers and sisters of Islam, Kaabir Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, that day they passed. And the next day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declared that no one in the community may talk to these three people. So he said that was just like a death pass. We were saying salam to someone, no us. Asking for some stuff, paying for that, nobody was selling us anything. Because Prophet says social bypass. What? Social bypass. Social bypass. Samaji Mukata. My dear respected brother and sister in Islam. So anyhow, Khan Malik radiallahu ta'ala says, they, after 40 days, it was like this. Murara and Kabir, Murara and Hilal, radiallahu ta'ala, they were not coming to Masjid. That nobody is talking to them. But he said, I was coming. I never stopped coming to Masjid. So I was coming for prayer, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting here amongst the Sahaba. Amongst the Sahaba, I was saying, Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa was not answering. Yes, and I was looking at the ground, not to have contact of eyes with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I was ashamed of what I had done. But when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was not looking towards me, I was looking at his face. Yes. Beloved, yeah. But the moment God said, I said, I'm like this. I lowered my gaze. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, he said, after 40 days, one guy came, messenger came from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said to me, no talk to your own wife, even this is the order of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Kahim Malik says, it caused me a big pain, but I asked this guy who was sent by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what the Prophet order is, should I divorce her? So he said, no, there is no divorce. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never told me that, but your wife. And also my wife heard that, that this is the order of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, that I was thinking, let me check. So I went home. And I said, Salam to my wife. She turned out this. They called the order of the Prophet. He said that my brother in law, who was my cousin, Sayyidina Qatada, was Yadlautaraman. He said that he was working in his garden. And a small wall, it was So one day early in the morning after the prayer, I was sitting on the rooftop of my house. And one Sahabi, he was rushing towards my house, and he was saying, Abshirya Kaab, Abshirya Kaab, Abshirya Kaab. That, oh Kaab, congratulations, have a happy news. Allah has accepted your Toba. Oh, subhan. So he said, I jumped down from the front of him. And I was coming to the Masjid because of my happiness. And he said that Sahaba were welcoming me in groups and congratulating me, congratulations, and congratulations, and congratulations. So he says, when I came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so I said, Salaam And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Wa Alaikum As Salaam, Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. So I asked the first question, Ya Rasulullah, you have forgiven me or Allah? You have forgiven me or Allah? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Laqattab Allah alayk. Allah has forgiven you. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to make waqaf of my whole property, you are rich man. For the sake of Allah. So he said, no, irfa qaraan of sik. Irfa qaraan of sik. Have oh, something for me, sir. So I said, okay. My land is in Khaybar, that's for my own use. All other garden, that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for jihad peace of Allah. My dear respected brothers, they have known Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a great extent. So, that is one issue. The second issue is, 
Ah, we have been created for Khalafat. Thanks be saying of another group of ulama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, by Ispara Rabbuka li malaika inni ja'ilun. I am going to appoint my agent, my representative, Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, and we as his offspring. We are the agents of Allah. We are the representative of Allah. We are the Mahindagan of Allah. We are the Khulafa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said that human beings have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Khalafat. But we decided that there is no difference between two points of view. Then being agent of Allah that is ibadat and worshipping Allah is khalafat. So there is nothing here. So now human beings have been created for ibadat and for khalafat. Both are one and the same thing. Now coming to the point that who will teach us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to be the agent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I have sent the prophets and the messengers to guide you in this direction to go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the teachers, they are the instructors, they are the role models. But all the messengers and prophets, they were sent to a specific nation, in specific time, in specific area. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِ وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودًا وَإِلَىٰ سَمُودًا أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا وَإِلَىٰ مَدِينًا أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبًا Allah is mentioning special tribes that we sent Nuh to his قوم Hood to his قوم Salih to his قوم Shu'ayb to his قوم Ali Musalawat wa Taslimat Every prophet and messenger before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent to a specific nation Only two messengers were there They were sent to two nations, not to one Otherwise every messenger was sent only to one nation. And these two are Musa and Salatu was Salah. Because they were sent to two nations. One, Bani Israel and the second, Abbas, the Coptics. The second. Why? Because Bani Israel and Coptic, they were related to one another. Not through marriages and Indians. Their relation was different. That the Coptics, they had enslaved the children of Israel. That was their connection. Master and slave, they are connected and related to one another or not? The type of relation is there. Human offense. Human offense. When you are talking to someone, even though he is doing wrong, but your tone is very harsh, so he will offend you. You will offend him. He will refuse and reject. So, فَقُولَ لَهُمْ قَوْلًا دَيَّنَا لَعَلُّوا يَتَذَكَّرُوا فَيُؤْمِنَ تَرْهِبًا أَوْ يَخْشَى فَيُؤْمِنَ تَرْهِبًا أو في يوم الرحمتان أو يوم الرحمتان that maybe you will convince him or attract him so they will believe that he will believe or you will frighten him from the punishment of Allah so he will believe you so they were sent to two nations and now Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم look at him Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم he was sent to the whole world and he is sent to the whole world قل يا أيها الناس إني رسول الله إليكم جميعا. Tell them O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم O mankind or children of Adam I have been sent to you as a messenger of Allah سبحانه وتعالى to all. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was by specific nation, specific time, say specific area to the whole world until the day of judgment to Adam, to Adam, to Zayd, to Wahid. So and so to guide us and to teach us how to worship of Allah, how to worship Allah and how to be the agent of Allah. So thus we say that the worldly stage has been established for human. Keep in mind at the end of my speech. So you have to understand that the worldly stage has been established for who? For human. Because before human, Allah created the whole world. Mountain worthy. The heavens, the skies, the space, the heavenly bodies, the oceans, the rivers, the trees, the forests, the animals, the birds, the birds, all of them they were there or not? So now spirit was ready. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human. It means that what has been established for human. 
and thus he has been given the title of Khalifa. Now, required for human is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to obey him. How they will be able to obey Rasul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Through messengers and especially through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who is Khatam al -Nabi. And thus we say that the word has been established from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now you got it or not? Say loudly. Yes. You got it or not? Yes. So, my dear respected brothers and the sisters in Islam, now coming back to the ayah which I have recited. That's almost one ruku of Surah al -Ahzab. I cannot go into details, but the only thing is that there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, story is very in detail. Imam Bukhari directs in detail. Other muhaddisin they have directed in detail. They, in Arabia, there was a custom. Not only one custom, so many customs were there. So many customs. And custom as a whole, these are not bad. We cannot call every custom that is bad. Don't do it. So these four are called Al Usul Al Asasiyah. But there are Al Usul Al Sanawiyah, secondary sources of Islamic law. So that is Asar al Sahaba. Number two, Al Istisar according to Shafi and Ahmad. Number five, so from Urf and Ada, Uzil Arf, Urf and Urf, Allah says in the Quran, that's why we got it. That's why Abu Hanifa got it, Malik got it, Sufyan Saudi got it, Ali ibn Madini got it, Sufyan ibn Ayna got it, Qasim Nabi Lala got it. That's Uzil Arf, Wahmur, Bil Urf, go by the custom. But what customs? So customs are three types. Customs are three types. So one, we call it al masarif al mufida The second one, we call it al masarif al murat And the third one, al masarif al mursala Certain customs are there. It does not have any contradiction with Sharia, with Quran and Sunnah. And that is useful and beneficial for human. So Sharia is taking that into consideration. And there are customs which is bad totally. So Sharia from day one abolished that. Shirk was a custom. Shirk was a That was the custom of the people. Hazama wa jadda alayhi. From generation to generation, a practice is going on. What is it? It's a custom. Hazama wa jadda alayhi abana. They did not have any other source for shirk that why we are doing that. They say, well, what father were doing that? So that's called al masarif al murad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from there. One said there is no room for shirk and idol worship in my deen. And the third one is al masarif al mursala al masarif al mursala So what is al masarif al mursala Such like customs which does not go against the Quran and Sunnah. Sharia has not taken into consideration before because that's a custom which is known nowadays. So we will find out if it does not go against Quran and Sunnah, we will take it into consideration to make the life easy. Subhanallah. To make the life I'm teaching you law. Yes. So to make the life easy. So my dear respected brothers and the sisters in Islam, there was one custom which was very bad custom and that was the case of Mutabanna. Adopted son. What? Adopted son in Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera to Arabia and Peninsula at that time. Mutabanna, our adopted son, was considered just like real son. Just like so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wama jala azubaka kumulati to zahiruna minhuna, umma haji kumma jala adaya akum, abna akum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that if somebody say to his wife, Ante Aliya Kazari, Ummi, you are to me like you make up my mom. That for the Arab, they were giving divorce in such a way that you are to me just like you make up my mom. So that was forbidden forever. Forbidden forever with Sharia here. So Allah subhanahu wa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here's one story. Aus Ibn Samit, Aus Ibn Samit, Ibn Samit, Umar ibn Samit, Razi Allah ta'ala an. Ayyan Umar ibn Samit and Osa ibn Samit, as you know, that some people, family-wise, they have different genes. Every family. So we know that. 
these people are this pen in the ground. This pen is very soft. This tribe very straight. They try in the big fighter. They take us up jeans. So our and Sanat and Dilla Khan, they are very very strict. How strict they were? Obad al Dilla Khan was the puppy of the mission. Because here, the mission, in the time of Sayyidina Umar al Khattab, was the Dilla Khan. Muawiyah was the governor of the Dilla Khan. Muawiyah bin Sufyan, he was the governor, the governor of who? Umar al Khattab. And Obad al Sanat, he was the Qazi. And the judge of the mission at that time. So once they were sitting, Obad al Sanat said something. And Muawiyah al Dilla Khan differed. He differed his point of view. So Obad al Dilla Khan, he had a strong nature. So he stood up. He came home. He came home. He prepared his camp to go back to Medina. He put his stuff because at that time government was not like our government then. In government said they are making property and things like that. Yes. So what? Simple stuff. Put it on the camel. Mounted the camel. Came to Medina. When Sayyidina Umar of Allah Taala on one day for Fajr prayer he came. He saw Father Musa. I'm in the justice of the Supreme Court in Damascus. He is in Medina. How? I don't know that my Qazi is here. Yeah. So he said, Salam, wa salam alaykum, how are you? Alam, okay. How you can? He said, I cannot stay there. I cannot stay there. I said, what? what happened? Why you cannot stay there? He said, Amir al-Mumini. I said a thing. And Muawiyah, the governor, Razi Allah Ta'ala, he differed me. So he said, then what? So he said, I am the judge, I have a say. I am the Qazi, I have a say. So he said, you should have told him. He said, yeah, Amir al I have given you my pledge. So whosoever is appointed by you, I cannot disobey him. That's against Quran and Sunnah. So that's why I didn't say anything. And I came out of that area that if I will say something other way around, that will be against my pledge of allegiance. And I'm not a cheater. I'm not a defrauder. I cannot do fraud. That's why I came here. As long as he is governor there, I cannot stay here. So say now Allah said, take it easy. What? Take it easy, inshallah. Just pray. Have a few days. You will go back. I mean, we don't put to my test. So he said, no, no. There is a special rule, and the special rule for you is that you will be there in Damascus, but you will not be subject to the province of state or to the governor. Directly, you will be subjected to Washington D.C. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. to Khalifa and to Amir al-Mu'minin. So his brother also decided. Rosy Allah Taala having the same strong genes, and his wife was for the decision of Rosy Allah Taala on her, his first cousin. This, the daughter of his real uncle, the brother of his father, Khawla bin Tisalaba. But once Khawla radiallahu ta'ala anha said something, also the Zamit, he lost his temper. And he said, Anti aliya kazahri tumbi. You are to me just like the back of my mom. Ya subhanallah, old man. He said, Khawla, she was the cousin as well. She was thinking, who will give services in this aid to my husband? So he rushed into the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Salam alayka wa rahmatullahi wa alayka salam. Kaif hal, wa khair, wa kaif aus. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, kaf hadas ma hadas. Happened what happened? He said that who will give him service and he said to me, Anti aliyya kazari ummi. So is there any way to live with and to give him service? He is not feeling good, he is on his bed. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Azunnu, anna ke qurindi alayhi. I think that you are haram for him. You cannot live as a wife with Paul Sinai Samit anymore. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, but who will serve him? So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Azunnu, anna ke qurindi alayhi. That you are haram for him. She was repeating that request again and again. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَالسَّمِعَنَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّذِي بُجَادِلُ كَفِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوْرَكُمْ عَدَيْتِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Our own my messenger, I was listening to you both very attentively. That the way Khawla was asking you and you were answering him. And I was getting her heart that what she is thinking at that time about that husband of her. Allah Allah. 
such like women were there as well. Nowadays we are living in such like an era, that in that old age, the husband will say that, he will say, oh, thanks God. God rid of someone who is on more dead, 80%. <laughs> but that was how the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so Allah said, well, now yes, more how I was listening to your dialogue, to your discussion. You were debating one another. I was listening to you very attentively. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down the hukam of kafara. The hukam, they, with such like saying, the woman is not becoming haram forever. But the husband, he has to pay the kafara, either to do fasting for two months, or to liberate a slave, or to feed, 16 masakim. So then they will live like husband and wife again. Got it? Got or not? So one said now in his time, along with a group of Sahaba, he was going somewhere. An old lady having a stick in her hand and bent, she was coming. Allah. And the moment she saw Amir Umini, she said, Ya Umar. Because she was going in since Makkah when his own father and mother used to call him Omer. Got it? They said, Ya Omer! Sahaba became a girl. Whom from Caesar is shivering like this? Yes? Kisra Fathers is shivering like this. But this old lady is calling him Omer, not a Mirumini, not real name Omar, Omer, is from Safar. Yes, so Omar said, yes, yes, ya Omar. So she was saying, Omer, you know, you were not a good horseman in Makkah. You were taking your goats and them there, and you were getting beaten from your father and your mother said, you Khattab. And they were saying, you were very nakam ke sam ke بکریاں <laughs> आपके जिम में हर हर फट का हक है हर हैवान का हक है हर परिंदे का हक है आपने भूख को और लगी रही और लगी रही और लगी रही एन उमर रजी अल्लाह तआला इन हार्ट सन ही वाज स्टैंडिंग विद व्हेन शी लेफ्ट देन उमर रजी अल्लाह तआला ही केम टू द ग्रुप सो दे सेम रूम में कद अजमत इसने तो बहुत बहुत बड़ा किया ਸਾਡੇ <laughs> अल्लाह करीब फरमाते हैं मैं अटेंटिवली सुन रहा था जब वो डिबेट कर रही थी आपसे उसने कहा वो अम्मा जिसको अर्ज पर अल्लाह सुनता रहता है वो और काम होता है कि उसको नुकसान करे वाह जी वाह सुभान तो मुसीकीर का अकीदा था कि ये रियल सन है अल्लाह करीम ने फरमाया आपने हिज्जत की एक बात की वो ठीक है आपने हिज्जत की एक नौजवान को लेकिन वो कभी रियल बेटा नहीं बन सकता उस पर शरीया के रियल बेटे के احکام वो अप्लाई नहीं होते लेकिन जो कस्टम सदियों से चला आ रहा है जहनों से उसको निकाल आसान काम वो बड़ा मुश्किल काम है जहनों से निकाल तो रसूल पाक सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम औलन तो इस मुतबन्ना के कांसेप्ट के खिलाफ उनको गाइड करते रहे लेकिन वो ज़ेनों से निकालना मुश्किल था तो अल्लाह करीम ने हुक्म दे दिया कि मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम आपकी पुतीजात बहन ज़ैनब बिनत जहर 
رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ آپ اس کا نکاح کر دیں اپنے متبنا اور مرگولے بیٹے زید بن حارثہ سے اور یہ شادی چلے گی نہیں میں یہ نکاح چلے گا بلا کے بعد سپریشن ہو گی اور پھر ہم اسے آپ کی نکاح میں دے دیں گے تاکہ پریکٹیکلی اس حالت اور پور عادت کا توف ہو جائے Charity begins at home. Islam and correction and information is also begins at home. So, Peygamber ke gar se ye isla shuru ho jaye, phir ye baat loon ke zain se nikal jaye ge. So, Rabbi Al-Qaim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sidi aage al-Qaim bin Jahaz radhi allahu ta'ala an haqiqat. Or us se ka ke zain. Aap zain ibn Haritha se nikah ka. Ab, Jahaz, wo apne qabilay ka sardar ta. Or zain ab ki warida, huzur ki pukpi ki. بنا دیا تھا تو اس کو ذرا ریزسٹنس ہو گیا کس کو حضرت زینب رسلس ہو تو اس نے کہا اتام رنیا رسول اللہ ہم کو شاگر ہونے جی جی آپ مجھے حکم دے رہے ہیں یا مجھے آپ مشورہ دے رہے ہیں that you are giving me مشورہ or you are ordering me تو رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said بل آمور ہو گئے but I am giving you the order سو نکاح تو ہو گیا it was done but it was not useful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't win it because that was for some other reason so Zayn ibn Harissa came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said ya Rasulullah this is not working it's the poor real lady an'amta al'allahu alayhi wa an'amta alayhi amsik alayka zawjaka wa attaqillah and keep your wife and don't do that wa tukdi fi nafsaka wa tukfi fi nafsaka ma allahum uddihi wa takshan naas اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی بولا بیٹا آپ یور متبنا ناٹ ریئر سن سو تخش الناس واللہ حق و انتخشا سو اینی ہاو لن اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی سیز فلما قضا زید منہا وطر زوج ناٹ ہا when the job was done divorce happened separation happened so Allah says we married her to you O Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and now that is in the hadith that the nikah of Zainab bin Bichahash radhi Allah ta'ala here on this ground has never taken place and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and entered to her house otherwise Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not entering his own house without informing the people, the, the family so he came and entered to his cousin a lady house without ya ala bayi salam alaykum nothing like that so Zainab became alert ya Rasulullah تو پراکت صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے بھی سائے کے لئے فلما قضا زید ام نحا وطران زو وجنا کہا نکاح اس دن دیا وین امہات المومنین ور سٹنگ ٹوگیدر سو سیدہ عائشہ یوز تو سی مائی فادر اس ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ آئی نیڈا کلاب دو ابو بکر اور سیدہ حفظہ شی یوز تو سی مائی فادر اس عمر ابن خطاب آئی نیڈا کلاب عمر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ سیدہ صفیہ کی یوز تو سے آئیں فرام دی آن فرنگا فارون علیہ السلام این زینب بیت بی جہاش شی یوز تو سے زوج کنہ اولیاء کنہ علی خرص و زوج لی اللہ و حد زوج لی علی عرشی that you people have been married to the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ السلام by your guardians and your family men to رسول اللہ on the ground I have been married to the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ السلام by Allah on his عرش But anyhow, Muslims in Mecca they started propaganda. Look, Al Munafiqeen they started propaganda. What a message he is! Daughter-in-law he married. What a bad action! 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that actually halal and haram concept is coming from Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something is halal, so that is halal. When he said that is haram, who is the source of favor and form? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that's not a sin for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whatever Allah has made halal for him. Sunnah Allah Allah says that is my sunnah. In previous people that I was making sometime one halal haram for them, another haram halal for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that was my decree, it was to be done and that is done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa kana amru dahi, alladhina yuballihuna wa salat illa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, why I made it halal for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though in sharia that was never been haram. But you people were thinking that is haram. Alladhina yuballihuna wa salat illa. I'm giving such like eases to those who are conveying the messages of Allah. Wa yakshawnahu. ولا يخشون أحد إلا الله. إن سد لا يبين لا يكون محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. They have only the fear of Allah and no fear of any any creation. وكم هذا الله حسيبا. حسيبا. وكم هذا الله حسيبا. إن الله سير ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين. So what is this one ayah? And then inshallah the time of prayer. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى says. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not the author of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makana Muhammad abahad. He is not the father of anybody, including Zayd ibn Harissa. Walakin Rasulullah wa khatam al-Nabiyyin. Now, why the Nabuwa stopped after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why? It stopped. Mr. Zawarama al-Qadiyani, he has written that Nabuwa is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rahmah should never be stopped. I said that Rahmah is Rahmah as long as Allah said that is Rahmah. But when he said that is Rahmah, so you should be slapped then. <laughs> so there what Allah says, Wakan Allah, the good Shaykh Narima. Allah knows everything. When he says something is Rahmah, that is Rahmah. When he says that now this Rahmah is turned to Zahmah, now rain, it is Rahmah or Rahmah now? Say, rain is the Rahmah of Allah, but in Pakistan the blood. Subhanahu <laughs> Yes, and he is also a nice man. Having said like followers and such like Muqtadi, Wahu Dawan and Hamdulillah. Jazakallah, Mashallah, Jazakallah.